In this video, I'm going to be telling you the top 5 things I wish I knew when I first started out. Hey, Nob here. So top five things I wish I had someone tell me about when I first started out. Before we get into that, I have an honorable mention. Uh, it's going to be the scroll pips bonus. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it has to do with the scrolls here. Uh, I actually mentioned it in my best way to get heroes video. So I'll leave a link down in the description below for that if you want to check it out. Uh, but pretty much uh, every time you use a scroll, a pip will fill up. And then when you have all the pips filled up, your next scroll that you open up will get double the value. Uh, so you always want to open scrolls up in sets of four uh, because every day the pip count will reset. So for example, you see that I used a scroll already here for common scroll. And if I don't open up three more, uh, that pip will reset tomorrow, right? So yeah. Uh, I'll demonstrate it real quick for you. I already opened up a scroll already today, so I only need to open up two more. So if I open up, uh, I only get gold now because all my heroes are maxed out, so yeah. Okay, and then see, so it says two times the value. I have all three pips filled up, so the next scroll that I use, I'll get double the value. So for me, I should get uh, 125 gold times two, so that is 250. So let's open it up and see. Boom, so 250. So yeah, so that's my honorable mention scroll pit bonus. Just remember that as you go through the game. So let's go straight into the real list finally. So the fifth thing I wish someone told me about is to save my gems for high priority heroes and most wanted battle pass skins. So what do I mean by that? So if we head over to the daily shop, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the screen already, but if you aren't, uh, the daily shop gives you a book of XP as well as XP for specific heroes that you already own. And then you have a chance for new heroes to show up in your shop for gyms specifically. And this is one of the things that you really want to save your gyms for. So for example, if you have a really high priority hero that you've been really wanting that showed up in your shop, uh, you don't want to miss out on the chance to get that hero, right? Because the daily shop actually resets every day. So if you don't get enough gyms for that day, you miss out on that hero, right? So yeah, it's very important to save your gems for high priority heroes uh, when you first starting out. The other thing that you should save gems for is for your most wanted battle pass skins. So for the battle pass skin right now, it is Draco. So if you get the pass, you get the Draco skin. And then after the season, the Draco skin will come out and then a new one will replace it. So how are you supposed to get the Draco skin again, right? So every season, as you may know, there is an event. And each event, they actually bring back a old... Uh, battle pass skin that you can buy for gyms specifically. It's around 298 gyms, I believe. So it's not cheap. When I first started out, I missed out on the Demon Mel skin and I really wanted it. So when they implemented the system of returning battle pass skins, I definitely saved enough gyms to buy her. So yeah, definitely save your gyms for your most wanted battle pass skins. But yeah, there's actually a third thing that people use gyms commonly for, uh, but I hesitate to tell you to save save gems for it, but I feel like it's necessary for me to tell you about it. Uh, so the third thing is for relic forging. So if you don't know what it is, uh, each relic has their own stats and pretty much people try to reroll their stats uh, to try to get like the best setup that they can get, right? And by doing this, it costs a lot of gems, a lot of gems. So this is definitely a in-game task uh, that you'll get to eventually. If you're a new and progressing player, I definitely don't recommend saving gems specifically for this because it's definitely a, uh, a gem dump for sure. Uh, so I recommend saving your gems for your high priority heroes and for the skins that you want, right? All right, so that's the fifth thing I wish someone told me about. So on to the next one, number four. It's going to be some quality of life functions that the game gives you. So we're in an invasion. The first function I wish someone told me about is actually right here. The sign with two arrows. Uh, this is actually an auto sword button. <laughs> so I didn't know this sign existed when I first started out. So yeah. Uh, so if I just summon and I put stuff on my bench, if I push this sign, it'll actually auto-sort everything on the bench for me. 
So it'll put all of your units and sort them on the left side and then it'll put all your items and books and whatnot on the right side and it's definitely a lifesaver. Uh, so when I first started out I had to like you know micromanage all of my units and put them together and in reality I can just push this side. So the next function I wish I knew existed was this retreat button up here. You actually don't need to force close your app or anything like that to escape from your invasion run. Uh, you can actually just click the retreat button and then click retreat. That's it. The next functions I wish I knew existed were implemented pretty recently actually. A lot of people still don't know about it, uh, but uh, the two functions I'll be talking about are actually in the same retreat menu as we see here. So the first one I'll be talking about is going to be dismissal area. So you can actually choose it to be big or small. So what is this, right? So if I choose it to be small, it'll be regular. So what does that mean? So if I wanted to dismiss this unit, AKA cell, I have to drag it all the way down to this corner and let go, right? So if I let go over here, for example, then it actually won't sell the unit. Uh, if I go ahead and change the dismissal area to big, then it will change this whole bottom part to the cell area. And I just have to let go anywhere in this black area and it'll sell the unit. Uh, I actually prefer it this way. Um, you can actually do your cell actions really quickly. And yeah, that's what I prefer. Uh, I recommend playing around with both settings and see what you like. So the other function that I wish I knew about that's in the retreat menu is going to be a very important one, auto deploy. Uh, actually, by default, it's turned on. So what does this do? I'll actually use this invasion run while we're at it to show you what I mean. So if you look down here, my formation is actually zero out of two, meaning that I don't have any units on the field, right? I can only have two units. Uh, actually, this is a really bad example because I have mask. Uh, so pretty much mass doesn't count towards your formation number, okay? So just know that. Um, but yeah, so I can have another unit, right? So if I put another unit, then it'll be two out of two, right? Uh, so what this does is that if I only have one out of two, when I push start, the game will auto deploy the unit onto the field, making it two out of two, right? So let's try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to hook this. And then pretty much when I click start, then the game will actually auto deploy this unit to make my formation max, right? So let's try it out. So yeah, there you go. So the game automatically put my second unit on the board to fill my formation up. So sometimes you don't want this, right? So in what situations do you not want this to happen? So when you're running Insignia Relic, you don't want this to happen. Uh, so for Insignia, the more units that you have on the field, the less damage bonus you get, uh, if you didn't know that already. So I actually just want to keep this layout, for example, I want to keep one out of two, right? So, but in reality, I actually want to keep on summoning units on the bench, right? To try to merge and double up and all of that. Uh, but I don't want the game to actually put my units onto the field and fill up my formation number, right? So in order to do this, then you go to retreat menu and then make sure to turn it off. So uh, it's actually really important to turn it off because actually in arena formation, it'll actually keep this setting. Uh, so as of right now in arena, uh, you actually can't click the retreat button and adjust the setting. Uh, so if you have auto deploy turned off, then the game will remember your setting and then in arena, it won't auto deploy your units. Uh, but if your settings, you have it on on, then when you do your arena formations, it'll actually auto deploy your units. So if you're running an insignia like Joel composition in arena and you uh, accidentally had your auto deploy feature turned on, then every round it'll actually just auto deploy units onto the field. But yeah, I definitely recommend turning this feature off just because you can have control over who gets deployed and who doesn't, right? So the third thing that I wish I knew existed was actually you can double tap to merge. So so as you know, you can actually just drag like normal and merge, right? Or you can actually just double tap the units and it'll auto merge. <laughs> so yeah, and guess what? This actually applies to items, right? So if you drag items over to each other, it'll actually merge. Or you can double tap like this. Crazy, right? Uh, but yeah, that's the third thing that I wish I knew. All right, number two, the thing that I wish I knew when I first started out is most definitely going to be Hero Lock. Now, Hero Lock is definitely game changing. 
Uh, I did a whole video on it explaining how it works. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you haven't checked that out already. Uh, but I'll explain it briefly here. But if you don't know about it, I strongly recommend you checking out my video. Uh, but pretty much it applies to only five heroes in the game. Lily, Alberon, Bardry, Laika, and Lunaire. Uh, these units are specifically coded to not show up uh, on round one in the first three squares. So when you're running a single carry comp like this i'm running armis as my single carry uh, i'm trying to get a bunch of armises right so pretty much i run a solo carry with hero lock that's the formula uh, so yeah uh, definitely check out my video and it's definitely a game changer you'll start viewing the game a little differently and a lot of strategies will start popping up for you uh, but yeah that's number two Last but not least, the number one thing I wish I knew about when I first started out is definitely going to be the Pawn Discord server, or the official server for that matter. Uh, so when I first started out, I played mainly solo, and pretty much you play Invasion, and then you join a few uh, random alliances here and there, you do Raid, and then you find out that you're the only one alive in your alliance, and then you play Arena, and then you pretty much repeat, right? You, you don't really have much player-to-player uh, -player, uh, communication. Uh, so when I first started out, I joined join Pawn eventually and I learned about all of these chapter invasion tricks and uh, I actually learned about Hero Lock there for the first time and it changed my view of the game completely. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend joining either the official Discord server or the Pawn Discord server. Uh, there's a lot of people there, a lot of veterans, so if uh, the Pawn Discord server doesn't have any specific information that you're looking for, you can always ask in the public chat and a lot of us will be more than happy to help you out, right? Uh, I recommend and joining a really good alliance as well that you can connect with uh, because I actually personally connect Discord server alliances and things like that as an extension of the game uh, rather than just like a social tool uh, aside from the game, right? Uh, so for me, the Pond Discord server is actually part of the game. So without the Pond Discord server, I actually might you know, lose interest in the game. It's a really big part of me and big part of the game. So I highly recommend joining a Discord server alliance that does that for you because it will definitely increase your enjoyment of the game by a lot. Uh, so yeah, those are the five things that I wish I knew when I first started out. I hope this helps some of you. So thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.